Today I am reviewing Forbidden Desert, Thirst for Survival by GameRight and designed by Matt Leacock, the master, if you will, of cooperative games. Uh, it is a sequel to Forbidden Island, which came out about three years ago from GameRight as well. And there's a lot of similar, uh, you know, mechanics to a Forbidden Island, Pandemic, but it is also so very different. Um, not only is the theme different, going from, you know, the pieces sinking in the water on Forbidden Island um, to a desert where you are struggling to find and keep water, but uh, the game also is has a very, very cool uh, means of moving the board around. The landscape is always changing. And the players, again, are looking for pieces of, uh, in this circumstance, a flying machine in means uh, of escaping the desert. Uh, we have kind of all the components out here. Uh, in a game in progress. The instruction booklet is one of the finest instruction booklets I think uh, for a game. Uh, it's exactly all, everything that I look for in an instruction booklet it has. It uh, has it flows very very well. It talks about the setup, it talks about uh, how the game is played uh, and what your different actions are. It gives you details on that. Um, it gives you detail on uh, how the game ends and has some other information, uh, deeper explanations of the cards. Uh, it's just, it's a really, really well done uh, instruction uh, book. Uh, the actual game pieces themselves also very, very nice quality. Um, you have 24 of these double-sided uh, uh, pieces, tiles, that you will shuffle out into a 5x5 five five grid. You go ahead and put some sand pieces out as uh, the diagram shows you in the game. Uh, you have a bunch of these uh, sand pieces that are double-sided. And you also have the flying machine and the flying parts. Uh, that go ahead and fit into it in different locations. Uh, really pretty nice uh, little mini flying machine. The engine here is actually metal. Uh, so really, really kind of fun as you gather the pieces together to be able to uh, put them all together into the flying machine. So very, very cool components. Uh, the game comes with this big uh, kind of this is the, your sandstorm meter and it has a little base so that it stands up so everyone can easily see it and reference it I really really like that component uh, Forbidden Island had a similar one and it did not have this stand and I'm, I'm amazed at how much I enjoy having that stand vertical um, the uh, game for the different carriers has different the different water markers um, and so there's you got a bunch of these little markers in the game they stay on the cards really well and so it's not like in some other cases other games that I've played these markers are either too hard to get on to the, the uh, component the card or the tile or they're so loose that it just falls off. It doesn't stay. These are really, really nice. They move perfectly. There's, you know, it's not going to move anywhere and it's not going to fall off. So, anyway, it's very, very well done. The actual gameplay of the game is very, very uh, simple. You have four actions. You're either going to be moving about the board orthogonally or according to your ability you can do different things but you move around the board you're going to be looking for those pieces now how they do that in this game is 
uh, very cool. They have these tiles here for, you'll have two different tiles for the different components. So there's four components, two tiles of those. So you have eight of the tiles of the game for the machine parts. And as you flip them over, I'll show you here. There's one that has arrows left and right, and then there's ones that are up and down for each one. And that is where the piece is. So you go to the different, you flip these over this in this row somewhere, and then this in this column. So you're going to go ahead and grab the orange piece when you've figured that out and place it on that tile. So that is really kind of what you're going after is those pieces you want to get those four pieces as quickly as you can and then everyone comes to the landing piece and flies away now it's not quite that easy because at the end of each turn you're going to be drawing cards equal to what's shown on this meter so right now it is on the three level so at the end of my turn I'm gonna go ahead and draw three cards from here and what happens is the storm is going to move and distribute sand to the other tiles making it harder for us to move around the game board as well as harder for us to dig out and excavate the different sites uh, harder for us to figure out where the pieces are um, as well as you know hard, maybe harder for us to get water so what happens is with these move storm move tiles this is facing north and you're going to go ahead and we're going to move three tiles into the open space to the right and we're going to add a piece of sand to each of the tiles that we move now you move when you can or when you are able so if we were to draw that we would actually move these two pieces we don't have a third one that we can move into this space and we go ahead and we place a piece of sand on those two tiles that we moved. Now let's say we were to draw this tile again, or the, this as the next card. We wouldn't be able to move any tiles, so it's actually we're safe from the sandstorm that turn um, because there's no pieces to move, there's no more sand added to the game. But you have to keep drawing, so if we draw another one, Sun beats down. These are pretty nasty cards because players uh, have to move one uh, tick mark down on their uh, water meter. So unless they're using, they can use a solar shield or in a tunnel, which they have. Uh, let's see if we can find a tunnel here. Yeah. So you'll notice the tunnel icon in the lower left hand corner. If you're on this tile when the sun beats down, you're safe. You're in the tunnel and uh, no harm done. Uh, here's a solar shield as well that it was mentioning. So if you have to move your tick marker down, phew, losing water. If you ever get down to the skull and crossbones, you lose the game. Um, it only takes one person getting down to the skull and crossbones to lose. So, as you're losing water, you're saying to yourself, okay, well, how do you get water in the game? That comes from, there are three different tiles with this back, and it's kind of an oasis. Well, two of the tiles have a well on the other side. When you excavate the tile, when it's like this and you flip it over, anyone on that tile gets to fill up their little canteen two tick marks. So it is more beneficial to you if people gather on the one of the oasis when you flip it over. Now if you have the water carrier, as in this game, the water carrier can actually come back to one of these tiles that is flipped over and gain water to water for an action. The other players can't do that. It's kind of a one-time thing when you flip it over. Now, however, there are three. There's one that does not have a well. 
So you guys could be spending all sorts of actions because everyone's running out of water. You get on the tile, you flip it over, no well, no water, and that is a sad, sad day. So um, you gotta you gotta find these wells, use them appropriately, uh, take cover, try to end a turn in a tunnel. Uh, the tunnels also allow you to, for one action, move to another end of the tunnel, uh, which is really cool. Um, let's see, the other tards that we have in here, Storm picks up, which makes this tick mark go up. If that ever gets to the scroll and crossbones, you lose. If you ever run out of sand tiles, you know, you need to place one somewhere and you can't, you lose the game. But it is amazingly fun going through the different game, trying to figure out where all the pieces are, um, the getting these uh, turned over. You get the different item cards. You have jet packs that allow you to move around the board. Dune blasters. You may have, you know, a tile with like seven of these sand markers on there, and you've looked and you you know you need to flip over that tile. Well, that sand blaster will save you seven turns by just using that one sand blaster and removing all of the sand. Um, so the items are really, really key to the game as well. The, uh, you do have multiple ways of losing, only one way of winning. So there's all sorts of different, uh, uh, things to consider in the game. Um, and yet the game is so simple. And so there's, it appeals, I think, to those who like a simple type game. You're all playing together as well. Uh, but there's a lot of strategy to the game as well and playing with the different roles, different combination of roles uh, keeps the game fresh and you know different board setup each time the board's actually moving around uh, it's uh, I just I really love that concept uh, the game uh, plays really really well uh, me and my wife when we played it the two-player novice version felt almost a little too easy for us. Um, it could, you know, to me, the novice on Forbidden Desert uh, what felt a lot easier than Forbidden Island. Maybe I just feel a little more panicky when those in Forbidden Island, you're actually removing these tiles out of the game. Whereas these, you know, sand piles up, but you can always remove the sand. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, the that's one of the great aspects of this game though is you can change the difficulty um, love this game if you have Forbidden Island or played other cooperative games uh, this one's still worth playing uh, check it out and for those who are new to the genre of cooperative games this is a great introduction um, great theme and uh, I go ahead and give it a, a great big thumbs up uh, and go ahead and check it out. 10 out of 10 stars.